Yo, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well. It's July 4th weekend here, officially in the full swing of summer, really hot and humid where I'm at right now, but we got a long weekend and hopefully everyone's enjoying themselves. Entire purpose of the video this week is gonna be answering one email I got a long, long time ago. Sorry, I responded saying I would make a video to answer your question and I'm finally doing that even though that was months ago, but I didn't forget. I thought this question was really good, really relatable, relatable for me, probably relatable for a lot of people and the general gist of it is feeling left behind in the industry of software or tech or whatever. So first thing I wanna do is just read the question. All right, so I'm gonna read this question word for word. The English might be a little broken, but I'll paste it here or something. I'm working four years IBM India in standalone Java module creation, Java SE, which will be hosted in Cobra. I don't know what that is. And front end made in Avalet and Java Swings is the client. Legacy old application created in 19, 95. Damn. I'm feeling alone in the industry. I have no experience in web development. Recently I started working in Spring Boots. What I'm looking to learn is a, the list is big. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, wow. Angular, React, Ruby, PHP, JPA, Hibernate, DBs, Cloud. There are a lot of things and a lot of people are already good at this. I'm worried if I'll be able to survive in this industry. I can't concentrate on studying things. This fear is always there. Also, my major is civil engineering. This is also dragging me back mentally. Everything I am learning by self, I believe in basics, not going with the trends. This also may be a negative in today's world. From your videos, I see you as a guy who is keeping it simple. I feel this is what I am missing. So I thought you could help me. For a self learner, could you please advise? I need a path forward and a helping hand. So that was a mouthful, but I think everyone got a general gist of the question, like the general tone of the email is definitely one of anxiety, scared of being left behind, and that's something we can all relate to. So whole point of this video is that I just wanna break down, dissect this question. I think I'm gonna try to answer it as directly and specifically as possible, and hopefully it helps everyone. All right, let's do it. First thing I wanna do for this question is just break it down in terms of emotions or feelings, because there's a lot going on in this email and let's just break down the four problem points first and then we can try to address it. So from my perspective, when I read it, I thought there were four. There were four things on this person's mind. They were working on irrelevant technology, falling behind. Two is there's too much to learn and it's overwhelming. Three is there's slight imposter syndrome due to civil engineering being a previous major. And four, there's unknown steps about the future following the trends or sticking to the basics. So those four things, these four things are the major kind of emotions I got from this email message and I wanna talk about each one specifically. So let's just get straight into it. Let's talk about point number one, which is feeling left behind or working on irrelevant technologies. And first, first thing I just wanna say is that this is a really common feeling. I feel it a lot. If you feel a lot, it means millions of other people feel the same way. Second thing I want to address is that the major thing to fix this situation is putting yourself in the right environment. And I think environment is the key thing here and I can't stress that enough. Let's just take your environment, you and the email, completely objectively, okay? You're working at IBM as a software developer and even though you're frustrated yourself by the team, this position actually, if you read that on a CV or you read that on a resume, it looks really good and a lot of people would kill to be a software developer at IBM. It's a legendary company. First, let's just state the obvious. IBM is a huge company, tons of different teams. Let's just call them tons of different environments. And I don't think every single environment is working on code from 1995. There are a lot of teams going on and I'm sure, I'd be very surprised if everybody's working on code from the 90s. So the first thing I just wanna ask you, writer of this email, but have you done the most that you can do to position yourself even within IBM to work on technologies that are more relevant because you're on a team that's working on code from the 90s but I'm positive there are other teams really close to you you work in IBM India that's probably there's a huge you know tons of stuff going on there and I'm almost positive there's stuff like right around the corner that you could probably look into so first thing is have you done your best to position yourself as best you can just within IBM so all of us are human, right? 
the, you watching, me, uh, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, whatever, everyone is human and some people are different than others, but we all just have one kind of tank of energy per day. Like we have just one tank of energy per day and it slowly, slowly, slowly depletes itself. It's physically not possible to work 16 or 20 hours at 100% for the whole day. You only have so much energy per day, so it's up to us to use those energy or mana, whatever you wanna call it, most effectively. And the easiest way to use your energy points most effectively is that you just have to position yourself in the right environment. So in your case, for example, your nine to five job, you're spending nine to 10 hours looking at code from 1995. Of course, your brain is gonna be tired when you go home and try to learn about web technologies. You just physically, like biology, you don't have enough energy to do that well. This is really why I think environment is really important. And hopefully I didn't lose you with this whole energy tank concept, but if you're in a good environment where you're kind of working on things that you want to work on, that's the best because it's the most effective way to use that energy. You wanna use that energy as effectively as possible and the easiest way to do that is make sure it's aligned with your job or your school, your major, or just your environment. It's really abstract, but the reason why I think you're so tired is that all your energy tank is spent on your day job looking at code from 1995 and you're, you're getting too tired and anxious. So what you really have to do is really take a clear look at your environment and change it and start working on code, not from the 90s. And then your energy tank will just be aligned with most, with your energy tank will be aligned with what's most practical and what actually is gonna give you value. So that's the dream. That's what you need to shoot for. And I think you can do it. Okay, second, second emotion that we had to talk about is having too much to learn and it gets a little overwhelming. So I should make this pretty quick. I don't have any groundbreaking advice for this whatsoever. The only thing I have to say is that humans, you know, we work concurrently, right? Humans don't really work in parallel. We take on a lot of things at the same time. We take on a lot of different tasks and eventually they have to be done. But you know, it's proven that you can't take on 10 or 20 things at the same time and do them all effectively. So my very normal non-groundbreaking advice is just focus on two or three things. Already in your email, you listed 10 technologies that you want to learn and your list already isn't that, it isn't designed very well, it's all over the place. You haven't picked the two or three things that make sense together. You're all over the place. And once you do that, you can't take on 10 things concurrently and do all of that because just think of your energy and your brain as like a processor, right? A processor has to context switch between different processes and that actually takes, that's a very expensive thing. So just like us, if you have to context switch between 10 different things, all your energy will be spent switching instead of focusing on the two to three core things. So I think with this emotion, I think how I just read from your short emails that you have, it's pretty typical. I think there's just option overload paralysis. And when that happens, you really have to dissect it down to two or three things. So actually I'm in, I'm in your shoes right now. So I'm actually trying to learn Java. It's a new like kind of realm of technology that I'm just getting into too. And I'm actually probably learning the same exact things you're trying to learn. So right now I'm focusing just on Spring and Hibernate. That's all I'm focusing on for now. And then I'm gonna come back and dissect Java, the language more, and then move into more frameworks. But I'm only doing two things, like two, two things, maybe three things, but two things at a time. So I'm trying to do this, but you just have to break it up. I think the list that you gave me, just it just represents that you're taking on too much and you have to organize what you're learning better because you'll get better at that with time, but you just, when you see that list grow more than five, something is wrong, all right? halfway done third third feeling from this email is that there's a little bit of this imposter uh, I don't know I don't know the right word but kind of imposter syndrome due to civil engineering in the past I get this a lot too and I think it's actually uh, maybe a deeper issue in your mentality not really in your technical skills but I actually think it's somewhat straightforward to overcome this because I think a lot of these feelings is just straight biology and neurotransmitters so let me explain that a little more. The cliche simple advice is always the best advice. So the civil engineering thing, you were a civil engineer in your previous major and now you're a software developer. Like you're a software developer at IBM. There's, 
no argument for that. Right now, at the present moment, you are a software developer and the civil engineering thing is already in the past. So the idea is that you're a software developer now and you're gonna do whatever it takes to level up and move forward in that space because I'm assuming you've chosen to be a software developer, not a civil engineer again. So what that kind of means is that when you introduce yourself to a new person, you introduce yourself as, hey, I'm a software developer and I happened to learn civil engineering before, you're not gonna introduce yourself as, hey, I'm a civil engineer and trying to be a software developer. So hope that makes sense. It's kind of like if you think too much in the past, you just get depressed, right? If you think too much in the future, you just get anxious. So you just have to think as best you can, just think in the present moment. But you know, many people have said that, I'm saying it again, but it's the same, it's the same advice for all this stuff. The second thing that I think you should do is that you're feeling a lot, I can, I can sense it that you're feeling a lot of mental drag and I think it's good to offset that by having small wins for yourself. You mentioned stuff like you're tired from work, you can't focus on learning all these new technologies. You said, you said really briefly in the email that other people are already good at this, which by indirection is kind of meaning that other people are already good at this, why do I have to be good at this? But I can just tell that overall it's like mentally dragging you down and one thing you can do is you just need small wins and it's biology because let me describe small wins. Just make yourself a to-do list, easy to-do list. Like number one is finish online tutorial about Java framework. And once you do that, you just cross it off and you have one small win for yourself because I think when you're mentally dragged down, you physically need biology, like neurotransmitters to get those small wins and get you back up and get your self-esteem and mentality back up because all it is, every feeling, like every, it's, it's science, right? You just have to, it's all engineered. Every feeling you're experiencing right now is just different signals and neurotransmitters going through your brain. And you can kind of control that. If you just give yourself small wins, just make a to-do list, check it off. You just get a little injection of dopamine into your brain and you feel good. And that's gonna hopefully offset it. If you like depression, like that's actually like just, you know, a weird behavior of neurotransmitters into your brain. I'm not describing that well, but aside from doing drugs, you'd be surprised at how well you can control just your feelings if you're active about it. So uh, don't do drugs. You can do drugs if you really want to, but I think the mental drag part is that you just have to create dopamine essentially and make yourself a little happier. All right, so we're at the fourth and last point that I want to address, and this is just having an unknown future state. You're not sure what to do if you stick to the basics, go with the trends, and I guess the general feeling is that you're not sure how to go about this in the future. One thing that you mentioned in your email that actually stood out to me as potentially a very dangerous sentiment was that you mentioned sticking to the basics, which is good, but you also mentioned that you don't want to go with the trends, which is very dangerous. First, I just want to clarify myself. You know, if anyone who's watched my videos for a while now, I always say the same things like, look at foundation, keep it simple, go back to the basics. But when I say those things, I don't mean that you can neglect the trends. So again, just to reiterate, I want to make this crystal clear is that I do preach foundation and all that basic stuff, but you still have to keep an eye on the trends, but you have to learn the trends with the strong foundation. I, the only thing I say is that you don't follow the trends blindly without learning how a computer works first. You have to learn both simultaneously. And if you're stronger in the foundation, you can push the trends out, the trends out harder. And if you're not strong in this foundation, you should focus on that first before you try to get deep into like VR programming when you don't know how software works. Let's think about it. Practically, you do have to follow the trends to a certain extent because that's what makes you kind of valuable in today's society. And you know, the system is the system. If you want to get paid for the work you're learning, you got to keep up to a certain extent. You can't avoid that. You can't just learn C and be like, I have, I learned C, I'm, I'm better than that. So let's get a little more specific just for your question, right? You are interested in learning more about web technologies and you've been doing standard Java, not even enterprise Java, but you've been doing standard vanilla Java at your job at IBM and it was written in 1995. And to be honest, yes, you're right. What you're working on is irrelevant. 
the good news about this is that Java is still not going anywhere and it's still a huge skill, like a huge demand skill. And that's also one of the reasons why I'm trying to learn it, but people still use Java heavily for a huge amount of, huge amount of things and web is just one of them. And it sounds like you do want to get into more web technologies. So my advice for you specifically from your case is that don't switch from Java. You mentioned React, JavaScript, Ruby in your list, just stick, stick with Java, don't switch languages and do everything it takes to learn about Java as it applies to web programming. And there's only a certain select set of frameworks or libraries that you really have to understand. So I would just focus on Java and Java with the web and just dominate that for now. Don't switch languages. Don't look into anything else. Don't even, don't look at JavaScript or anything like that. All you have to do is learn web programming with Java. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Just write, write that on your wall, like Java web programming, write it on your wall and then you just look at it every day. All right guys, just final piece of advice in all of this is that we talked about all these four different emotions here, but I wanna go back to the first one because I think the first one definitely is most relevant in your case and probably many people's cases, but you just have to align yourself well. You're, you have to align your energy tank, your energy points for the day with your environment. And when those two things are aligned well, you can progress faster and not get burned out. So for the person that wrote this email, if your team really is just working on code from the 90s, you do have to change different teams because yes, you're probably getting irrelevant with your skills. With that said, I'm certain there's some place in IBM where you can go that is working on newer technologies. And if that's also not possible, which I think it is possible, but that you have to do something drastic to switch your environment to get out of that because you shouldn't be maintaining code from 1995. I don't think you should be doing that. If you forget everything I said, I would still focus on the environment because when you control the environment or at least you position yourself in your environment differently, you're just gonna use your energy tank more effectively. And the only thing that separates out different people is that everyone has the same amount of energy, right? It's just biology. You have a similar tank as me and we have a similar tank, maybe a smaller tank than you know, Bill Gates or something, but still, every it's human. We're all human and we have a limited amount of energy, days and stuff in our life and we'll all just die one day. So it doesn't really matter. So just focus, use your energy well, align yourself with the environment and I think everything should be okay. All right, so that's all I have to say about this email. Definitely try to dissect your email as best I could. Hopefully this answer was good or helpful even though it's long overdue and please let me know if you thought so. But hope everyone joined, enjoyed this. Please give me a like, comment, share the video maybe, but ask me any questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. All right, take care.